there guys uh pretty warm here in amarillo but today we got robert's uh 68 jeep tranny in here now this guy got he's he lives a couple blocks uh from me out there in river road and uh he's got like five or six jeeps you you can't miss him when you go out there but anyway we're going to be switching this two-wheel drive bop style 400 oldsmobile pontiac uh over to a four-wheel drive so we're going to be switching the output shaft out of it, getting rid of the tail housing, and then uh, putting all of our kit, clutches, stuff like that inside of it. So it's going to be a pretty cool thing. Uh, Robert, we want to thank you for bringing it to us. Uh, but I want to show you a little bit what we got here going on. What we got is we got the overhaul kit we're going to be putting in it. We got the bushings. We got the pump gears. We got the filter. We got the modulator. We got everything to do it. We got high pressure rings. Uh, the kit does come with a, a metal ring but we're not gonna use it when we're using a, a high pressure ring in the tranny. So that's pretty cool. Also, we wanna thank, uh, I lost, actually, these gloves are slippery. I'll tell you what, you can't pick that thing up. I wanna thank uh, whoever sent these to me and Trent. Uh, Trent was uh, sick the other day and he was gone, couldn't get them, but uh, we got them. Man, I can't tell you to make some new tools out of these things. Wow, I mean, we appreciate that, guys, definitely. Yes. Thank you, thank you very much. But hey, guys, well, also, we got something else in for the Dirty Bird. We've been uh, saving again, trying to get this thing back together, but it, it's going to take special pieces and stuff on this billet block. So what we did is we went with a gear drive. We went with the RCD uh, billet gear drive system. I'll give you a little uh, vision of what it kind of looks like. This is the timing cover. This is the gear drive, the idler gear, stuff like that. Really cool system. You can see the billet cover here. Yeah. Woo! That's Line right. the camera. Is that beautiful, guys? That's some bling bling. I'm telling you. Beautiful. Wow. Got your idler gear here. Got some bolts. Got your uh, billet uh, cam retainer and, and roller bearing Man. cam plate. Beautiful. And we have your upper gear set here. Ooh, look at this thing. This is the first time you've actually got it out of the bag. Yeah, so. this is the first time this has been out of the bag. I have not taken it out of the bag. So I'm, I'm really excited with this. I mean, this is... Uh, <laughs> I ain't slept in a couple of days, guys, believe me. It, it actually come in a day early. I was excited about that because I, I was worried about not sleeping the night before. But isn't that pretty cool? That's cool. We wanted you guys to be able to see that. This is going to be part of the... Uh, the Dirty Bird's new short block and stuff. We got it over the short block over at Don's getting the work done to it and stuff. So he's going to get that uh, put together. We get it back over here and get it in. So we're excited, excited. But anyway, let's get back on uh, Robert's uh, 400 here. Like I said, we're going to be switching it over uh, to a, a four-wheel drive, short shaft. It's already got a bushing in here, it looks like, uh, but it's flush. Uh, these bushings have to be stepped. Uh, there's a bearing race that'll hit that right there. So that's got to be about 30 thousandths down in uh, below flush here. So we'll get that taken care of. Um, also, if you look here, see that little gap right here in that bushing? Yes, sir. It should be pointed at that hole. Correct. See that right there? So the bushing uh -huh. has, isn't put in proper. We'll get that taken care of too. So let's get this uh, tail housing off this thing. This is about the ugliest tail housing I think I've seen. Dinosaur. Come off a big old Oldsmobile Pontiac four door, 70 miles, 60 miles, something something in the day. Call those boats. Yeah. So. Oh, man, I wanted to do something real quick, guys, before I got uh, on to this, too. Um, we want to, uh, we, since we post videos day to day like that, so we tore down a 6L90 uh, yesterday, did a video of it, uh, and had, it had the uh, one, two, three, four clutch uh, burn up in the tranny. And uh, anytime we have clutches burnt up in those trannies, we have to look for cracks right off the bat. I don't care. I mean, it's got to do with something to uh, do with the crack. So uh, we got in here and we took the drum apart and we got it a uh, little air blower here. Nope, I think you're good. Okay. Teresa here? Nope, she's, she's gone. Not, okay, she's gone. She'll be good. <laughs> okay. But anyway, 
We put a little bit of oil around this weld right here, and I'm going to put some air on it right here, and I want you to watch this crack. Did you see that? See that? You can just see that crack all the way around. See that? So that's why that burnt that clutch up, because of the, the weld cracked right here. But normally, to me, this is because of high pressures. These trannies have high, high pressure problems. So once you put all the uh, transgo stuff in them, the sonar stuff in them, you cure all that problem. But the crack's already there. So that's the easy way to know. If they got burnt clutches, look for cracks on those units. So pretty cool. But anyway, we'll get back to this modern transmission. <laughs> So we got a tail housing that'll reach plumb across the street. We got an output shaft about the same way. Now, being a four-wheel drive, um, no speedometer gear. We got your governor gear here mounted on the shaft. We'll come in here and put a freeze plug in here and plug this because uh, he's going to put a four-wheel drive transfer case on the back, and the speedometer gear will be back there now. So we do have a passing gear uh, connector here. Anytime you put 12 volts to this wire, uh, it will go into passing gear, which will be like a 3-2 downshift or a 2-1 downshift. Now, if you have this wire disconnected, this tranny still should have a passing gear downshift all the way up to about 45 mile an hour. Uh, anything past 45 is going to go away. You're going to have to have this uh, switch no matter what. So, Now, this was kind of funny. I, I found this boot right in here. I, you don't see this very often because... To me, that's a 700 uh, overdrive de detent boot. See? I don't even know how that got in there. You know, if you have it, this tranny should have an O ring style uh, dipstick tube. I don't know where the tube's at. We didn't get it. No. But this physically is the, the detent boot for a 700 tranny. That's funny. Yeah, so I don't know what he's going back with it. I don't know if he's putting a new style boot or a, a car dipstick or something like that. So and we'll get the modulator off here. Now this is one of the oldest modulator canister style. It still was adjustable to a certain extent. That's cool. Seen these on old Jeeps, cars, I mean old timey stuff. Now we're going to go back with a high pressure uh, style modulator. Uh, it is going to be adjustable. Actually, you can see it right there in the box. So you can take that rubber hose off there, and there's a, uh, in the end of it, it's adjustable. Usually when I get them in, I turn them a turn anyway, no matter what. Right off the bat, I'll turn them in one turn, and they're usually pretty close in our application, what we're doing them for. We have a vacuum modulator valve here. Those in the case. Now this uh, bracket right here, you can bolt it on two different directions. One's right, one's wrong. If you notice, this thing's got like little feet on it. The feet helps hold the modulator in. It, you can put it on this way, and now you let the modulator come out this far. So you won't know it because of the O-ring. It's kind of hard to tell. So you want that feet right there to push on that modulator valve all the way in. Sometimes you get a shift kit. You might have a spring down in here that might stay. Sometimes they might even want you to put one there if you put a shift kit in it. So. Yep, I, there's no effort on taking them out. I can tell you that. That one did. That one wasn't. Uh, pretty loose. And we got our governor here. You always want to change this gear, polish this up with some Scotch Brite. Make sure your valve is moving on the inside. Make sure your paddles are moving. Make sure your springs are there. Now, I could go into some details on how to make this fully manual and stuff like that. And, um, we're not going to be doing that to this unit. We're going to be making it have a manual capability, but it's going to still shift on its own. So uh, we won't be doing any modifications to the governor at all. So. People might ask me why I couldn't get my uh, 
three eighths to quarter inch drive adapter off my impact yesterday. I mean, I fought it, fought it, fought it, tried to pry it off, pry it off. I could not get it off. And for some reason, it fell off. Don't know why, but I'm not putting it back on. We threw it away. We threw it away. I mean, it, it was a good, it was a black sow, impact sow, a, a connector. Uh, let me check. Yeah. I got one here. I'll get you. They come with the Milwaukee's. I'm pretty sure. And them do? Yes. Those? Yes. Well, I could put that on there, and I could not get that thing yeah. off yesterday. Yeah. And I've been using my chrome one on it with no problem, so I really don't know what was up. I fought that. Had to use my go back to air for a little while. Well, what's nice is nothing in the pan. There. Looks really nice. I like it. Uh, when nobody's been in here messing with anything. <laughs> I mean, we see all kinds of stuff, guys. Here's our famous O-ring. Wonder where it went. I guess they had it right there. Yeah. But it's too big. It just flops on. I don't know what they were doing, but I took the filter off and it was like that. Well, that's not where that goes. There's physically an O-ring down in here. When we overhaul them, uh, we actually double that O-ring right there. We'll put two of them on here. That way we know uh, there's no way it can suck air right here because this is above fluid level. That's too big. So I don't know what they were doing there. Now, if you got a deep pan, this extension is going to be longer, and there's going to be a spacer right here to extend the filter up to here like this. Right. So it's got a paper-style filter, which we'll be putting a, a filter filter, not a screen-style back in here. Uh, well, he's not a race car driver or anything like that, and we want this train to filter really nice. So... No signs of any shift kit put in here. The one two shift valve hole hasn't been plugged. So we know um, we're gonna have to grind on the valve. By grinding on the valve and plugging this hole right here, uh, we'll give you a manual capability. But as long as you don't do anything uh, to the governor, uh, the tranny will still work fine and uh, shift normal and drive. Now, if you want a fully manual capability, that's when you're gonna start uh, working on the governor and welding your governor weights out and stuff like that. So, have our detent spring here. Some of the four-wheel drives will have a double stack one. It'll have one setting over the top of it to make your clicks a lot harder. In case you hit a bump in the road, your shifter don't bounce around and, and make it go into the other gears. So, like we have our governor tubes here. We'll be putting them back, cleaning them up. Now your gasket on these 400s, I never tear them. If I, if I am going to take them off and they are going to tear, I, I open my kit and I match my gaskets right off the bat. Because uh, there's going to be three gaskets in this kit. Two of them you're going to use, one of them's not. One of them the only, is going to be the bottom one, I believe, is always the same. The top one is always different. I don't have my kit open to show you. So you're going to have to be looking here. If, let me find it right. This square, these two square holes right here, some, the other one will have a tail. It'll have a tail coming off this square right here. Let me get this off here and see what it looks like here real quick. Now this is your passenger solenoid here. Uh, you can put 12 volts to this uh, solenoid here through your gas pedal, up by your throttle body, toggle switch, push button. Anything like that, you trigger that 12 volts and you're going to have passing gear. Uh, and we'll get this off here. So when I'm right here, these two square holes, there'll be a tail on one. Okay? So you got to be careful on uh, which ones you put on there. And the same way here, the, here's another identification mark. The way this is shaped right here. So you'll want to look. Now your kit will come with three gaskets. One gasket will match no matter what. The other two, you're going to have to flip through them to see what you got. Okay, pretty simple. Write that down. Write that down. This is your one-two shift valve right here. You have a hole right here you can plug if you want a, a manual capability. Take and push this pin out right there. Come in and get this valve out of here and this sleeve. Like that. Set that aside. 
you're going to grab this valve right here. There you go. This come out just like that. Now you're going to take and grind this big land off right here. Grind it plumb off where it's totally gone. Plug that hole right there. Now you got a fully manual tranny, but when you put it in drive, it'll shift automatically. But if you put it in low gear at 100, it's going in low gear no matter what. You pull it down, it's going down. But that's the neatest thing about it. But if you want a fully manual capability, you do these two things, and then you weld these out. You weld your paddles out here. You weld that right there where that don't move. And then you weld these out where these don't move in and out. They stay out like that. You do these, now it's fully manual. You put it in drive, you're in drive. You put it in second, you're in second. You put it in low, you're in low. Will not shift, or will not shift until you move the shifter, so. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. Uh, and we have our check balls here. Now, when we go to a performance, doing some performance stuff, this check ball here and this one here we'll leave out. The others we will leave in. So you're going to leave this one in, this one in, this one in, and the one in the trough. You can leave all these out, but this one, you leave that one out, you're in trouble. Any, anything in a trough, you cannot leave out. Now you have your kick bound down servo band, your engine brake band servo. You, now when you take this out, you take this off, there's a little shoe horse clip right here. You better not lose it. But this doesn't work without it. This falls through. So, and the shoe goes on the inside, not on the outside. So it sets down in there like that, the spring. Piston goes on top, set it down in there just like that. So if you lose that little <laughs> deal, I mean, it's easy to drop it in the yeah. fluid right oh, here. Yeah. Never even know it existed. Yeah. So, I agree. and this, all these videos are, I do it for first time guys, you know, that want to learn how to do this stuff. And it's a little stuff that'll get them. But if you watch here, I'm telling you about the little stuff that'll get you. He's not lying. He's been doing almost 30 minutes. Yeah. So Trent's learned more on my videos than he has anything. I mean, he has. Let me tell you, knowing what does what and how it works. Is the key. key. It's the key. That is key. Because mm -hmm. if you put a transmission in and, and you don't like the way second gear works or you don't like the way third gear works, does the tranny have to come out? How can you make that gear work better the way you, like, you want it to work? So that's when it comes into knowing what does what. Uh, your hydraulics, uh, stuff like that. You know, you got uh, these check balls are in here to control feed to a circuit, okay? So when you start messing with those holes or leaving check balls out, you're opening up fluid in those circuits to go to clutches or whatever. See? Mm, squirted me. <laughs> That's why bigger isn't always better when it comes to drilling holes and valve body plates and stuff like that. People say, oh, we'll just make that even bigger. Well, no. I mean, there's a limit to how big of a hole you can drill in these plates and stuff. So, now we have our center support bolt. It is a hollow bolt. And we have our um, reverse servo here, our third gear accumulator. You always want to check here for any wobbling. It wears here, breaks that clip. Put your new O-ring there. That O-ring's always hard as a rock. Hard as a rock. So. And now here, uh, some of them be uh, Teflon, or some will be rubber like the 4L80Es. See, this is a Teflon. So, can you switch it over? You can go get your 4L80E piston with rubber. If the bore here is the same, and this is the same here, and you got new rubber seals, hey, go for it. I'd rather have a rubber seal than a Teflon one when it comes to that, so. Uh, now you can air check this after you get it in, and check your band travel. Uh, you can air check it through this hole right here, you can, yeah. through here, <laughs> but you can hit what we do. There's no other way to check your uh, rear band travel, yeah. uh, but you can leave everything out and then you can air check it looking down in the barrel and you can see how much it's moving. You physically can't tell, you know, I got a piston I drilled over here, a cover, uh, and I push in there and I can tell how it moves that way too, but I like it both ways. I just try to make it 
easy on myself and more convenient. Because when I get done with this one, I got that one to do. When I get done with that one, I got that transfer case to do. When I get done with that transfer case, I got a 480E or 48RE down there to do. When I get done with that one, I got. Oh yeah, there's there's another 400 down there on the bottom. Uh, that we're doing too. I got to put up. We got a 350 and a crate right there. I got to do 30, 2500 stall. Got all the kid over there to do that. So we got a ton of stuff going on for sure. Not counting what's out in the parking lot. But we have our little nail right here. <laughs> I talk about it's just a straight nail. Believe it or not, your governor gear kit, uh, my gear kit that I buy will come with these uh, new pins right here, these nails. So if you have a kit, uh, if you can't find a nail, if you lose this, it, real easy if you don't bend it. Before I take the pump out, I bend it up like that. That way it can't fall out because I'm going to turn this upside down in the parts washer. See, but if you have a governor kit, you lose the nail, that nail will fit in there. So pretty, pretty easy. Yep. We have our pump pulling kit. Now, I can tell that this is original because I don't know why GM did this, but this is kind of odd, but they did do it. They put a metal ring here and a Teflon ring here. Believe it or not, guys, that, that is factory. I've seen it multiple times where GM did that. I, I haven't figured out why. And I think they by putting this metal one out here on the edge right there, uh, it keeps a lot of pressure out of your cavity in here. Uh, blow by leakage or, uh, around your vent area and stuff because your vents right here so anytime you pressurize your cavity in there you got you can get fluid out of the vent so this ring right here seals a lot better all the time but this ring here seals better on the hit and a lot longer jet longevity being a high pressure ring so it's kind of hard to say why gm did that i don't know yeah Up oh, one more. There's such a there's, we got so many lights up top up here, guys shining it down. It's just like a glare coming back at me. All this fluid shining looks like light bulbs. <laughs> <laughs> but we have our bushing down in here. You always want to replace our bushing. Uh, this is a selective washer right here. Get this ring off here real quick. Metal ring. But this washer right here is selective when you go to set your clearances up. Different thicknesses. You want to come in here and check your, your stator support right here. You have a suction side, a pressure side. And you also want to go in here on your uh, boost valve. Uh, you want to check it really good. Anytime I get an aluminum boost valve, I'll chunk it. If it's a steel boost valve uh, and it's in good shape, I'll always use it. But... Uh, Always get rid of the aluminum ones. They're just junk. They don't work. They don't last very long. Anytime you put a shift kit, anything like that. Uh, never boost out here. Metal. Yeah, now right here, you have a U-shaped clip mm -hmm. and a little washer with tabs on it. The tabs set in the center of the spring and then you have Your boost valve right here with this little U-clip on there, like that. Oops, sorry. Like that. Now, when we do a trans brake valve body, uh, that sets like that, and it goes in there like that. Okay. Now, when we do a trans brake valve body, we're going to be taking this right here and leaving this off, throwing it away. The spring. Uh, makes up for the difference, but we will be putting this back on here like this, putting the new spring in here, putting the boost valve, putting it back in like that, and we do a trans brake. So, pretty simple. Now you want, boy, that thing looks nice, doesn't it? You don't see that. I got a set of new gear sitting there for it. 
Now what you see on these is the bluing looks really good, but you always want to look on your teeth because this, this is where the bluing can go away. Yeah. Okay. Hey, as long as we get a good right, look at that. Trying to see some bluing disappearing, but uh -huh. that's a beautiful pump body. Sweet. Put a new bushing seal in there, some new gears. Now you always want to mic these uh, pump gears up because they make different thicknesses. Uh, but your uh, standard, I believe, is it like a Force 27. I believe I can't remember. I got. I'd have to grab the package to look. Yeah. Like I said, they made so many different ones of these. We just mic them, check them. Uh, that way we get the right ones. Put the sound that back. Where'd it go? Normally it says. Yeah, normally it does. It's not even saying on that bag what size that I have to mark it. Mm -mm. Okay. Yeah, I can't We're tell. We're looking at this right here, guys. Sorry, but normally it says what size what it size is. What size it is, what thickness the gear is. Yeah. I was trying to see that, and I don't see it on there. No. I don't. So we'll mic it and see what it is. That's the first time I think it's done that, folks. Well, lately, like I said, uh, our overhaul kits and stuff, I mean, we're having to get them Transstar, and they're doing a really good job for us. Just to keep up with us, I could imagine, to keep up with the world. Oh, yeah, I could only imagine. So we have our forward clutch here. Well, we, I like it when we get back in the old stock-looking clutches. <laughs> That's an old... Dinosaur. dinosaur. I got some clutches back there, guys. I'm going to show you. I got to find them. But they're solid brass. The ho brass from, on both sides. They come out of the early, early FMX transmissions. Uh, but they were solid brass. No, they, they were really cool. That's why I kept them. So, but we do have a wave in here on your forward clutch. We want to put that back in there. We're also going to put a, make sure the third gear drum has a wave in there too. Because on this one here, if you leave the wave out in high gear, if it has one, it'll have a really harsh reverse. So we don't want no customer complaints or things like that. So if you go back in here, see we have a wave. Now that wave ain't uh, designed to cushion third gear, it's designed to cushion reverse. Because your third gear clutch comes on and your band in the back comes on to back up. So if you leave this out, you put it in reverse, get ready for some teeth rattling. So if you don't have a 30,000, 4,000 stall in here, you're really going to know it when you put it in reverse. So it'll leave that in there, and we uh, can modify the shift plate uh, to feed that circuit a little bit better and still get a firm shift out of this tranny, even uh, with that wave in there for third gear. So now, on this tranny here, being a 400, there's no lock up. Uh, we can come in here and leave the center seal out of the drum. Uh, that'll let it have a full uh, bit of supply of foot on the whole piston. Uh, surface area to apply the clutch so you can leave that seal out and uh, also you can leave the uh, seal out of on the stator right here when I get this out I'll show you too so now let's look here real quick if I do that now we're this one doesn't have to be updated to a 34 element drum or anything like that like I said he's not uh, trying to go tear a bunch of stuff up like we do or how we go right here, or whatever you want to say. <laughs> we don't try to tear We don't try to tear it tonight. It just happens. It just happens. Or time to time. Time to time. But here we have just your standard sprag. And how you can tell it before you take this off, it squeaks. Hear that squeak? That'll tell you that it's a, a standard roller style sprag assembly. Roller clutch is what they call it. It'll have springs and rollers. Like that. These will hold up to quite a bit. Now, if you try to start making second gear shift hard, you'll break that sprag. Now, that's why they go to the uh, 34 element drum. You also want to look down in here for any type of sealing ring wear. Because if you have any bushing wear down in here, this drum will rub on this stator right here. Or not the stator, but the center support. Excuse me. Trail band. Yeah.
Now we will switch this over to a four clutch system just to upgrade it from a three clutch, being it's a four wheel drive and he's gonna go play. Now we're gonna be leaving the wave in it. We're not gonna take it out. Uh, we don't want no hard shift and tranny out of this thing. We just want it to work nice and have short shifts. So, but we will put four clutches in here and, and leave the wave. So, it's gonna work good, I'm excited. Every one I do, I'm, I get excited. I don't know what it is. I guess just the love of doing this stuff. If you ever had a chance to do this, God, I'm telling you, it's fun. It really is fun. It's not fun when they don't work, but it's fun. <laughs> but, but we don't have that. We don't have that issue. Yeah. We don't have that issue. That's what we love about it. Because we, yeah, we just don't. We know how to do them. Believe me. We got all the day, all the time in the world to do them. So, no, no hurry. That's why we're doing these videos. If we were in a big, big hurry, we wouldn't be doing these videos. Believe me. But anyway, all these bearings right here, you want to check your races on them because they are they do come apart. So you'll be able to check that uh, race there. You'll be check this race here. Check your needle, your rollers. Make sure it looks good. You have your four tab washer. Now you can put a metal washer in here. I'll show you that. Now also, when you leave your third gear drum seal off this one here, you want to leave this second ring off your stator right here. Leave that off right there. Leave your seal out of your drum. Leave this ring off here. Put your, these three on. This, that'll firm up third gear. Uh, and it won't firm up reverse. So just do that and you'll be a happy person. You want to uh, go get you some 180 grit. Really hit this really hard. There's no rutting. It's just shiny. You can see how shiny it looks. We want to get that off there. Sure. Put it in a vise. We keep at 180 uh a paper like this long we go and we we clean all that off and make them grip really good now two on these here we'll come in here and buff this make this nice and smooth but we want to look and see if our pins have walked on our gears if they have walked whether they walked or not we will come in here and we will TIG weld this pin right here to keep it from moving because these pins are bad about walking out and when they walk out they cut that plastic washer up Okay. Now, when we go back with this, we're going to be putting a metal washer down in here that's going to run right here. So, and it's a, if the washer's about an eighth of an inch bigger, it gives us more surface area, stuff like that. But we want to clean this up, make sure that's legit. Won't have no pin walking and stuff. So, always replace your bushings, especially on this, this area here. This center support bushing right here wears, and this bushing here wears. That's what causes this drum right here to rub here. When this sets in here. When this bushing wears, this starts rocking. Well, this here sets in this drum right here, and that's what supports that drum. Get that in there like that. That's wore out. It's going to fall down. Drum's going to wear right here on the bottom. So on the top. See, this one hasn't started. If the bushing still looks decent, same way with this bushing. If it wears, it'll move on this shaft here. It'll, it'll wobble on there because it's sport, supporting on here. Right. So it'll wobble. So you got two areas. You wear here, you wear here. It lets that drum wear here, a rub here real easy then. Right. So you want to look at your sun gear on both sides, make sure there's no wear. That looks nice. That's probably the best looking sun gear I've seen in a long time. We keep them in stock over there. We replace 99.9% .9 of them on these and the 480Es. You want to keep your lube dam washer in there. Uh, basically, this is what seals it up and keeps this full of oil at all time. It just doesn't run out. Your later 4L80Es got rid of it. Your early 4L80Es, some of them had it. So we like to put them back in there, especially if we're, if we're doing a derby car or something like that. We want to really keep all that oil up inside that planet. So Now, we got our four tab washer I was talking about that uh, you could run on your drum right here. See? You go to the brass instead of plastic. Same thickness, same tab location. Instead of me putting it on the bottom right here, I can buy one and I can put it right here. Just like that. This is actually bent. Uh, that's funny. 
Huh, look how bad bent that is. Wow. Uh oh, I had to look down in here. That is crazy bent. I could have bent that. Take. I don't think I bent that taking it out unless I dropped it on it. Huh. But anyway, that's bent. You can put a four tab in there. And you can roll a bearing the back of this. Put a new washer here even. So it's it's you can do it a lot of different ways on this to make it a lot better. I like my little green screwdrivers, guy. I abuse it. I literally abuse it. Yeah, I can keep. Yeah, we can keep up with them with that that color. It seems like really good. Now we're going to be doing away uh, with this shaft and be going with a little shorty over here. Now, if you look at this bearing I was talking about. Let me get this bearing out of here real quick. I say you can check uh, on a 400. You can check these bearings because they come apart. See, check your in and out of races. But on this bearing here, I talked about how that bushing had to be incest down farther. It's because that bearing sticks out. See that right there? That lip? Mm -hmm. Well, you can't put that against that bushing sticking out because it'll grind all that down right there and ruin yep. this bearing. That's why that bushing is stepped down in there for that clearance. Yep. So with this bushing, I'll cut it out, turn it, and get it lined up to the feed hole that feed, uh, lubricates the uh, bushing right here because that right feed, that bushing right there, see that notch? Mm -hmm. Needs to be lined up with that notch right there. So, same way this bearing here comes apart. I'm gonna check your race there. Check your race here. Looks pretty hot. Bearing's gonna have to be replaced. So, same way here, you wanna scotch bright this up. This here looks a little rough. You can see some rutting right in here. Let's put a new hub there. Look at your ring gear. Look at your parking paw here. See if it's grinded off, same way. Look at your uh, gears, your pins, your thrust washers. Make sure the gear doesn't wobble. Anything like that. So, whew, I'm tired, ain't you, Trent? Yeah, tired. It's been a long day, and it's just 10 after 4. So we got a few, about 40 more minutes to go. But anyway, Trent, thanks for recording. You're Definitely welcome. appreciate it again. We got a ton of stuff going on, guys. So y'all don't forget to subscribe, stay tuned, and we got a lot more show coming. Y'all have a great day.